Making Mastery Learning a Reality One Day at a Time. Hey, John Bergman here. It's the end of our third quarter here at my school, and I want to talk about what I would say are the two biggest problems in a mastery learning classroom, right? That, you know, like the premise of mastery learning is that students progress through content at their own pace, right? Right. But if students struggle with one objective in the curriculum, you know, in theory, they stay in that until they master it. And, and that sounds well and good, but my guess is that if you're like me, you found that giving students deadlines helps them get actual work done. <laughs> if students can completely choose their own pace, my experience is that some students won't have a pace, right? Uh, I know for my students that if I don't give them a pace, um, they just won't have a pace. So, so, so if this fear is holding you back from implementing mastery, implementing mastery learning, um, I've got good news for you. Uh, you definitely will be holding kids to a pacing calendar if you're going to do this effectively. So it won't be a nightmare for you to manage. So th that issue of pacing, let's talk about that. It leads to what I believe are these two biggest hurdles, right, uh, to implementing the Mastery Learning Classroom. If you don't solve these two problems, you're going to crash and burn. I almost gave up on Mastery Learning uh, because of problem number one. So what are these two big challenges? Number one, it's students who get behind. And when they get behind, then you can start having these huge gaps. That's number two, right? Managing students at vastly different levels of the things that they've mastered. So the issue, of course, is that you have students who get behind, and then you have some students who get uh, ahead, and then the gap gets so big that the managing the classroom is a nightmare. So the, the good news is that solving these two problems um, isn't that hard and uh, the solutions are linked. They're basically very similar problems, if you will, right? Students get behind, number one. Number two, how do you manage kids at vastly different places in the content? So number one, I'm going to say, is what are some solutions, right? Um, number one is don't allow students to be working on too many things at once. So when I first started teaching with Mastery Learning, I had some students who were literally three weeks ahead of their peers. Like I said earlier, I almost gave up on Mastery Learning. It just was too chaotic in my class. So what happened? You see, I had made that mistake of letting students work at their own pace. That's kind of key, right? Instead of what I would rather call a flexible pace, right? You must not let the gap between your students who struggle and your students who are successful get too big. If you do that, you're going to give up, all right? To that end, here's what I do. I set weekly benchmarks of lessons that students must master. So the beginning of each week, I say, you've got to master through, uh, say, 6.1 or something like that, and next week it'll be 6.4, or however you, you know, designate your specific objectives. Um, I then monitor them, and for those students who get behind, I am pushing them and pushing them and pushing them to master what they need to do. Um, by the way, I chose weekly benchmarks because it gives them some flexibility, and students like the flexible nature. They have some leeway and some freedom and it helps them to become more self-advocates. Now I say that and I'm not, I don't do that with every kid. So for those students who are more prone to getting behind and actually let's just be honest, my kids who get behind, many of them are more prone to distraction. And so I am a, for a few students in each class, I'm going to tell them what they need to do each day because they are not, they need more direction than just a weekly benchmark. So you, you know which kids I'm talking about. You have them in your class, right? Um, and but speaking of pacing, while we're talking about pacing, what I would encourage you to do with pacing is to keep whatever pacing calendar you did the previous year. So if you're teaching the same subject, uh, you know, by October 1st, I, you know, when I taught it in a traditional flat pattern, I, I got to, you know, you know, unit four or whatever, you know, still keep that same pacing calendar so that there's some expectations. Obviously, you still need to cover the same material that you did prior to mastery learning. So that's that's been my, my technique. Number two, so solution number one, right? Solution number one was just don't allow them to um, be working on too, thing, too many things at once. So that's step if number one, if it makes sense, right? And by setting these weekly benchmarks and telling them where they need to go, number two I would encourage you to, to solve these problems is to identify essential and non-essential objectives. So what I often do is I, so in a given unit, I might have seven uh, objectives or lessons. 
And what I do is I'll make the first five of them essential or four, what depends on the, uh, the lesson or whatever, or the unit. And then I will say you need to, I mean, every kid has to master the first four. But bonuses if you can master five, six, or seven. And that way that keeps them more together, right? So if uh, my students who struggle, my students who get behind, don't get to the last two lessons, no crime, no foul, then they've mastered the essential objectives. Uh, that has really worked for me and uh, helps keep the students ahead. And there's an incentive from a grade perspective for those students to master more objectives. And that has really worked for me um, in my next level. Uh, I call them levels, by the way, units a level because I've gamified. That is something that I'm going to be doing in this next level. I'm looking forward to it. So it's I just it's level nine in our coursework, and everybody has to get through 9.3, but it actually goes to 9.6, and so it's going to be you know bonus points if you can get to 9.6. But I I've, I determined that the most essential things are one, two, and three, and to sort of add another question you might ask, how do you choose what's essential and what's non-essential? Well, at the end of my course, I'm thinking of just one course I teach, my chemistry course, is um, for years and years I have done what, a, a final project where they have to like put a lot of pieces together to understand uh, the basics of chemistry. And for them to do that, there are certain skills or content that they need to know. And so that's my, been my filter. For them to be successful on the final project, they need to know which objectives. And if they don't need this for the final project, that becomes the non-essential objectives. Uh, you may want to use you know, the common core standards or your state standards or your country standards if you're from out of the country. Whatever it might be, what is essential? Hopefully you may have already figured out. I mean, this may be just a document you already have existing about what's essential and what's non-essential. So to review, all right, just so we keep on going, you don't let students work on too many things, right? By giving them weekly benchmarks, identify essential and non-essential objectives, and then Thirdly, I would encourage you to have some hard deadlines. As I said at the top, I'm, this is the last day, I'm recording this on the Friday before our spring break, right? Um, I have told my students that they have to have mastered through level something. Uh, so, for example, my physics class, actually both my physics and my chemistry class, it's interesting, they're both at level eight, totally different subjects. And today is the day that if you haven't mastered through level eight, then you're gonna have significant grade penalties. So I had kids at school with me last night until um, I had to kick them out because I had to get to an appointment. Uh, they are motivated right now because in three hours, my grades are due, or technically they're actually due after spring break. But I'm telling them I have to get them done because I, you know, I don't, I want to enjoy my spring break. So I've told them I'm submitting grades this afternoon and then if you've got something to turn into me, uh, today's the day. Um, chop chop <laughs> and uh, these kids are motivated when I was watching classes yesterday or I was I was teaching I guess whatever I wasn't but I was watch, watching them uh, work they were motivated they were working kids were asking the the students who have already mastered all the content there's quite a few students who have already like mastered the content those students have uh, they're getting help from those kids and I mean with this this is a very productive time and that's because there is a value to hard deadlines. I don't know if your kids are like mine, but my kids sometimes need a hard deadline. And I love it that every quarter, you know, I have to say, here's the hard deadline, and I got to turn in a grade and get there. And the, the good news is that kids are getting there. You know, some kind of come to the party a little bit late, but they're all getting there, right? And I am really encouraged that the, what I'm seeing, it's more than just like getting things done, but connections are being made. And yeah, it just works. So, like, review. What? How do you solve the two big problems? Right. Problem number one: students who get behind. Problem number two: how do you manage students at vastly different levels? Don't actually answer to number two. Don't do that. Right. But you're going to have students who are going to get behind, and so the big answers are: have weekly benchmarks. Maybe you need daily. I don't know. Whatever. Have these benchmarks. That would be number one. Number two identify essential and non-essential objectives and allow some students to not do the non-essential objectives because you got to keep the kids together you've got to keep them ish together not perfectly together but you got to keep them together and have some hard deadlines so i, I have deadlines in, per quarter I, I know some teachers in mastery who have hard deadlines uh, more frequently uh, if that's what you need to do you need to do that and as i close this i want to just uh tell you i'm very very excited about a new resource 
that you're going to have available still not till October of this year 2022 uh, I have completed a book exclusively on mastery learning I am so excited about this book I just got the final edits back from my publisher um, and then over my spring break I'm going to be um, doing a deep read of them and responding to the, to the uh, editors questions but anyways, October 22 my new book it's going to be called the mastery learning handbook a competency based approach to student achievement out October 2022 I'd encourage you to go to my website johnbergman.com remember John has no H and Bergman has two N's and then just sign up for the free newsletter and once pre-orders are available or whatever I will be sending out an email to you love to uh, love for you to, to have a chance to use this it's going to be a very practical it is I guess but you won't see it till October um, <laughs> it's a very practical step-by-step -step guide about all the things that you've been listening to in the podcast uh, about how to make mastery learning really a reality if, if, if you want to implement mastery competency based learning you want to do this and how do you make it really happen in your class I mean people are talking pie in the sky oh mastery is a great idea you should do competency based learning and think yeah but how do I manage all these kids you know you know this podcast has been about sort of one of those strategies but this is an entire book that's going to take you step by step and it, it's a handbook right it's it's really a complete guide to step by step on how to make it reality anyways johnbergman.com will get you um, uh, advance notice about when things are coming hey you can make mastery learning a reality one day at a time John Bergman signing out